Hi, good morning, sir. Just to check whether my Nobi and the view okay. Ah, uh, good morning, BC. Uh, please help me to slow down for two minutes. Huh? You're too close to your front bus. Operating Singapore's bus service is an immense task. From managing a complex network of routes... Then you start picking up the Panjur from the block 666, which is 4.8 kilometer. All right? OK, sure. OK, thank you. To unexpected road conditions... ...and harried customers. On the Red Dot gains unprecedented access into Singapore's biggest bus operator, SBS Transit. It's the second of three weekends of the early closure and late opening operations. During these periods of shortened train operation hours, SBS shuttle buses have been ferrying passengers to and from train stations. It's past midnight, and as the last shuttle bus leaves Buena Vista MRT station, the night is just starting for the last bus of service 93. Bus captain Jameson Go stops at every bus stop, even if there is no one there. We always try to maintain the timing and pacing of our last bus to ensure that uh, we won't miss out any commuters that actually needs the bus service. Buses run on very strict schedules. Every stop is calculated. As a night shift bus captain, Jameson needs to make sure the bus arrives at every stop at a specific time. My shift started at about 2.30pm, so it's close to 11 hours of work. Yeah, 11 hours of drive. At 1.10am, wee hours of the morning, Jameson completes his run. But before he leaves for the day, he has to drive 20 kilometers back to Ulu Pandan Depot to make sure the bus is clean and ready for the next day. Upon uh, reaching back here, first of all, we have to do a refueling. And after that, the next stage will be washing of buses. The time now is actually 2 a.m. Quite tired. <laughs> Quite tired now. Yeah, so uh, this, 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 is the, uh, this is the time where we call it a day. It's challenging due to the long hours of drive, okay, due to the size of the machine. You have to adapt. It takes time to adapt and adjust to it. It's 2 p.m. and Jameson has arrived at Harbourfront Interchange. He's been driving the night bus for the last two years. Once we take over from the uh, morning shift, we have a basic check on the condition of the bus. Okay, just to make sure it's clean, it's uh, in good working condition. 
Jameson is one of the few bus captains who have specifically asked for this shift. I actually do like driving the last bus because it's quieter, it's cooling at night, and uh, the pace is a little bit slower. Are you 73 or 93? Please, ladies, 92. Uh, do you go the wrong one? The wrong one, no. As a bus captain, basically we are providing a transport service for the community. So uh, it benefits even more people. I would say it's a fulfilling job, meaning full job. Service 93 travels from Harbourfront to Yunos. The trip takes 50 minutes. He has completed one run and has only a few minutes to spare before he hops back into the driver's seat. Okay, next week will be 16.05. Now it's actually 4 p.m. So in another few minutes time. Thirsty also. We can't drink too much during the long drive. Uh, just in case we wanted to go for a toilet. As a bus captain, when we see a uh, passenger in needs, uh, for example, elderly, uh, mother with children, we will hold the bus uh, until they get a seat. We have a scheduled time to travel, so any time that beyonds that is actually our break time. So even if I have to take extra time, I will actually use my own break time to travel. <laughs> Safety is my priority. Traffic inspector Susan Hahn may be all smiles. But the 55-year-old strikes fear into the hearts of some passengers. Hi, good afternoon. Sorry to disturb you. I need to check your easily cut. MRT cut, please. Easily cut. Thank you, sir. Her job is to catch those who cheat on their bus fares. On average, I can catch at least one fare invader a day. Most of the time, they did not tap in. And sometimes, they use the concession card that doesn't belong to them. The penalty is $50. Some fare invaders, they will start scolding vulgar words. I will ignore. I will just have to smile to them, respect them. Susan is one of more than 60 traffic inspectors who carry out fare checks on behalf of the Public Transport Council. I belong to Sector 1 and my route is like a uh, Bukimera, Vision uh, Topayo and Serengi. Mm -hmm. After once I covered all my services, I've checked all my services, I can check on any, any SBS buses. In a day, I can check about an average of 500 passengers a day. Uh, about 8,000 passengers a month. Oh, Hi, good morning. Oh, Thank you, sir. I see Inspector checking. Yeah, we're, you're lucky day. Wow. Good morning. Thank you, sir. Sometimes they ask me to give them a chance. If they insisted that they tap their card, what they can do is they can appeal to the public transport within 14 days. We have CCTV on the bus, so we can see whether the per person tap in or not. It's a job Susan didn't think she could do. She was a housewife without any work experience when she joined SBS four years ago. My boys grew up. I felt very bored sitting at home. My eldest son, he told me, he says, Mom, there is one SBS uh, road show coming out. Why don't you go and take a look? When I went there, the road show, they asked me to apply for this position, traffic inspector. But in my mind, I say, what is traffic inspector? Because I've never been in this kind of experience job before. So it's very exciting to me. Good morning, Thank you. I love this job very much. Different places to go and uh, different people I will see. I enjoy every minute and every moment of it. Today, Susan's inspection continues without a hitch 
But trouble is brewing at the SBS Customer Service Centre. You encountered an incident? What's this today, sir? What happened, sir? This is the SBS Transit Hotline office. Since 7.30 a.m., the phones have been ringing off the hook. SBS Transit, good afternoon. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, you waited from 11 p.m. to 11.45. Thereafter, the bus arrived. SBS Transit receives about 100 calls over a span of 12 hours every day from reporting lost items to asking for directions. Good afternoon, SBS. May I help you? Yes. Mm, OK, you want to go somewhere? How to go there, is it? Before joining SBS, 45-year-old Jessamine Purusami had spent 20 years doing customer service experience in the airline industry. You alight seven stops later. So she's used to handling customer complaints. When you are in the service industry, Dealing with people is always challenging because we never know what are their expectations. What has happened? You encountered an incident? All right, 2.05. Today? What's this today, sir? Today, yeah? OK. What happened, sir? Jessamine's colleague Kamala Devi usually manages the online feedback portal, but once a week, she is assigned to Just answer please, calls. Yes, ma'am. This was the feedback about the attitude of the bus captain, where uh, the bus captain was discourteous towards a commuter who actually pressed the bell to alight a couple of times. So the feedback provider is actually a witness. Oh, dear. OK. There were exchange of words. La. Everyone actually just okay. wants a resolution. There are some who actually just call us at that moment in a very angrily because they encountered something. But thereafter, they are calmer. And when sometimes they even call back to say, uh, I want to withdraw that uh, feedback. We will have callers asking for like famous uh, seafood yes. restaurants or famous power shops. If they can give us uh, some specific uh, landmarks or something like that, we will help them. Because what is famous in their context, we wouldn't know where. But some calls take even these seasoned responders by surprise. I remember one call that I got. It was a very nice lady who called into my hotline. She was quite anxious. She said um, she lost, she left behind a container of chili crabs. And she was so sad because she was telling me it was very expensive. She spent like $80 on it. So I caught the interchange that the bus was heading. And it so happened, yes, they did find the container of chili crab there. So I told her, and she was so happy, and she went down to pick it up. I think it was a very happy reunion between them. At the Tuapayo interchange, a passenger who lost her wallet is hoping it could be her lucky day. <laughs> But another card in the wallet doesn't match up. She was worried about we don't return the document back to her. We cannot just return, right? Because inside, we can see there's another uh, passion card which is not belong to her. Huh? Oh, NDC card. No problem. No problem. You will see your photo. I 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 husband. All right, so we've got to verify and at least we take down the contact number. For senior citizen, all right, we got to be more patient. Thank you. Keep explaining to them what, what are we going to do step by step, all right, because they may not understand. 
以了哈。可以，漂亮，飞了。五人，那个 IC 像吗？对对对，没有事，没有事。好了，回家，谢谢你啊。拜拜。Dealing with passengers is all in a day's work. But what about the SPS staff? Who looks after them? They need to sacrifice their sleep, sacrifice their time with their family. Okay, white color, white color like that. Does it have any ID inside with your name in, uh, on it? Every week, SBS collects over 150 lost items from their bus interchanges and MRT line stations. SBS Transit, good afternoon. Okay, so the school bag, can you describe the color? Spider-Man. Okay, red and blue. Huh? Unclaimed items are sent to the company's headquarters at Brattle. Here, the staff works in pairs to sort the lost items to ensure transparency. After you do that, you have to help me to sign the this ones. They do. Usually, we get is uh, lost items would be like handphones, wallets, and uh, maybe some uh, cards that they lost on the bus. I count the notes, I count the coins. We'll keep it here for approximately about three months. After three months, some will be donated to charity. The donatable items that usually we donate to Red Cross would be like clothes items or maybe usable wallets. For items found like handphones, laptops, we cannot donate them, so it will be sent to the, the authorised dealers to get it uh, removed and destroyed. Unclaimed cash is handed over to the Land Transport Authority. Um, this wallet came from Tampines Interchange on, uh, in July. So Malaysia? Yes. Okay, bye. Oh, no. 74. It should be 824 ringgit. 750. 750 plus 74. 824. Mm. Correct. 824 ringgit. And SGD is 100 USD. Correct. It's 8 p.m. and the evening rush hour is over. Bus Captain Effendi is back at Soliter Bus Depot to refuel and refresh his bus. He's among a quarter of SBS bus captains who work split shifts on weekdays. It's a 15-hour workday with a break in between. While washing, I will be feeling glad that my day is over without any major issues, many problems. I will get home usually around 8 plus, the latest 9 plus. Despite the late hour, Effendi's children wait to have dinner with him. When I spend time with my family, I feel very, very happy. Last time when I was uh, driving taxi, uh, even though with my family, I still think about my taxi rental, the cost, the diesel. Now with my family, I'm very relaxed. But working from 5 a.m. in the morning till late into the night means the burden of taking care of the family falls on his wife, Razia. I need to do most of the thing on my own, like um, make sure the, my son gets ready to school on time, then send my daughter to my parents' place and get to work on time also, then rush back home to fetch the kids, then make dinner, then only then my husband will come home. <laughs> 
Yeah, I really appreciate past captains now because of their working hours and how they need to sacrifice their sleep, sacrifice their time with their family. I do see myself doing this until I retire. It's actually a very responsible job. Have to be on time. Safety, number one. If I'm late, then people will get late for school, for work, appointments. It's a challenge which i OK to take. Huh? Night falls. As Singapore winds down, SBS Transit continues to operate late into the night. We are the ones whom our commuters in numbers of millions rely on in their daily transport. I used to think that uh, just driving the bus, what's so big deal about it? But only after I took on this job, it made me appreciate the, the amount of effort that goes in just to bring a commuter safely back home. It's challenging, the working hours. But to me is that once you have the appreciation from the public, you feel that it, you you feel like going on and going on and going on. Okay, bye bye. Right, after turning, check left, right. And every time you board a bus and sit down and enjoy the aircon and the smoke ride, behind have lots and lots of hundreds of over technicians putting their sweats, their efforts onto maintaining the buses. Well, that's part of the service industry. Good afternoon, SBS. May I help you? So, when you are used to it, it's just like another day. In our everyday, we see only the 6,500 bus captains in SBS Transit. But behind them lies many more unsung heroes working day and night to make Singapore a bustling metropolis. <laughs>